the next few videos, what I'm going to attempt to do, uh, I'm in my office in Switzerland, uh, I'm going to attempt to allow you to see the similarities between the experience that I had, the Zen Buddhist experience in uh, Korea, and the work that I do. Uh, I ask a question of people, uh, and I've said for years that it's that I ask a question that's a seemingly relevant koan, which means uh, a koan is a question that once you answer, once you get the answer experientially, you change. And that's really what I had the uh, example of in Korea. This man asked a question. It was seemingly irrelevant. It was a question that um, I don't, I don't want to take away from the experience. If you do, go to the experience. But what you had to do was you had to look for the answer to this question. And the question was seemingly simple, but uh, uh, really difficult as well and elusive. But the answer, what couldn't be answered with a yes or no, uh, the answer became an experience uh, that you felt that shifted your consciousness, that shifted you into another dimension, and allowed you to see you. And I see that this is what I've been doing for years with people. And this man claimed in eight days he could take most people, and I don't think he got most people in that class. Uh, because there were a lot of uh, intellectuals in the class. And what stood between them and themselves, and this, I know that sounds elusive and odd, but, but they were trying to think their way there. And what he did with the question, if you, uh, if you wanted the result, I guess is what I have to say, because I'm not, maybe it's take it seriously, but a lot of people did take it seriously, and that's not what got them through. But if you really wanted the result, you had to follow the instructions, uh, bypass your mind, tell it to shut up, do what he said, trust him, look for the answer, and then there had to be a generated doubt or anxiety, uh, generated by you in your desperate search for the answer. Uh, at the end of the event, I was talking to one of the intellectuals, and he looked pretty beat up, just worried. Just, um, and I said, did you get it? And he said, no, I didn't. He said, I, I've been studying Zen for a lot of years. He said, but he said, what's different here is, he said, the system that I study doesn't generate doubt. He said, this is new to me. I don't understand what he's trying to do. And it kind of made me chuckle. I didn't chuckle out loud because he was in some distress. But I don't know how you can get a person out of their mind into the direct experience of life without generating some doubt. And what I do know now is that they have to be willing and desperate uh, for the experience. Uh, of all the intellectuals, I think one made it through and there were a bunch of them there. Uh, and a lot of them just intellectualized the whole thing away. They weren't desperate. It's like, oh, well, if I get it, I get it. If I don't, I don't. Um, and this man hosted everybody. He paid for everybody to be there. Maybe that was part of it. I don't know. I know that uh, if people work with me, usually there's a fair amount of desperation. Whether it uh, pans out into an experience is always a curiosity. Uh, but uh, putting up with me for three days and <laughs> the fees that I charge, you got to be pretty desperate. Have fun. www.micpeakperformance.com